Welcome back to the rectory everybody, uh, back for another Holy Communion service. As always there may be other um, bits on the website. We're working very hard uh, to integrate everything now. So I'm hoping that Sharon's sermon today will be uh, incorporated at the correct point. And big thanks to Becky um, for doing the technical work on this. Um, I also want to say huge thanks to, to Kevin who is putting all of this on the website um, and to Claire and Steve who've helped to set it up and of course are putting a lot else on the website as well. So always good to say thank you to start with. Thank you to you for joining in and for tuning in and uh, maybe now uh, it's time just to be quiet for a moment uh, before we start our service. As always, uh, the responses will be, it'll be very clear when there's something for you to say. Um, I'm using some slightly different ones this week on the grounds that uh, we need to have some variety. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking that there will be some music, some hymns played by Crystal, hopefully with the words as well, uh, on the website too. As time goes on, we're hoping that we can get all of this integrated uh, so it'll be one service. Can I also say about the website, please keep an eye on it because things may start changing after tomorrow. Um, there will be some changes, although I'm not anticipating that any significant changes will happen anytime soon. So take a moment. Know that God is with you. Know that you are surrounded by God's love embraced in his arms, enfolded by his care. And wherever you are, wherever you're watching and joining in, the Lord be with you and also with you. Today's responses, um, since we're at home, I thought these were particularly appropriate. They are for the fifth Sunday of Easter. So um, the response is, God is at home in us. That's a nice way of thinking about lockdown. God is loving and full of kindness. God is at home in us. God is welcoming and full of beauty. God is at home in us. God is forgiving and full of justice. God is at home in us. God is with us. We are God's people. God is at home in us. As usual, um, the confession is a Kyrie confession. So to say, Lord, have mercy or Christ have mercy. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas, in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
you may find the words of the Gloria uh, on the website. We are, as I say, we are working on this now, but we we move now with a bit of a gap to this week's collect. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And this week's epistle. is from Peter's first letter, the second chapter. This is the word that was announced to you. So put away all evil, all deceitful, hateful, malice, and all ill-speaking. As newborn babies long for the spiritual milk, the real stuff, not watered down, that is what will make you grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Come to him, to that living stone. Humans rejected him, but God chose him and values him very highly. Like living stones yourselves, you are being built up into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices that will be well-pleasing to God through Jesus the Messiah. That's why it stands in scripture. Look, I'm setting up in Zion a chosen precious cornerstone. Believe in him, you'll not be ashamed. He is indeed precious for you believers. But when people don't believe, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offence. They stumble as they disobey the word, which was indeed their destiny. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's possession. Your purpose is to announce the virtuous deeds of the one who called you out of darkness into his amazing light. Once you were no people, now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I hand over to Sharon. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's not hard to understand why this text is so often used in a burial liturgy. Death troubles our hearts and we want to find some balance, stability and harmony. This text, however, is about more than the afterlife. It has something to say right here and now. It speaks to the very circumstances that trouble our hearts today. So, what troubles your heart today? Apart from the obvious worries of today, the COVID-19 virus, will I get it? Will someone I know get it? Will they survive? Will, they, will I be able to see my family? Two of whom are in the front line of the virus every day. Will I get back to work soon, see friends, Go to church. People are struggling every day to survive and manage on the little they have. No jobs, no money, no food. How much longer will it last? Then, of course, there are all the thoughts and prayers we have offered in the last couple of years for the wider issues. Violence and suffering in the world in too many places. Immigrants and refugees, gun violence, racism and poverty. Bullying, suicides. I think about ISIS and the increasing tensions around the globe. Our political situation, Brexit, what happened to that seems so long ago, but is still on an ongoing issue. Our already strained NHS, who have been amazing along with all those other people who have helped to get us through this. There are those grieving and mourning the death of a loved one, families that are struggling, couples that are divorcing, children that are hungry, and people that are hanging on by a thread. I think about my own sorrows, losses and disappointments. It's easy to be troubled. None of us gets through this life without a troubled heart. What would you add to my list? 
What is troubling your heart today? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus said these words on the night of the Last Supper. Jesus has announced his departure from this world, his death. Feet have been washed. Judas has left the table and stepped into the nighttime of betrayal. Peter will break his silence with a threefold denial. Thomas is lost and asks, how can we know the way? Philip has lost his centre and can't see what's right in front of him. Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied, he says. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Are you kidding me? Is Jesus really serious about that? Does he know what's happening in our lives and in our world? How can Jesus say that with a straight face when he was troubled at seeing Mary and the Jews weeping at the death of Lazarus, when he himself said that his own soul is troubled, and when St John tells us that Jesus was troubled in spirit? What is Jesus telling us? It's not as if there's an on-off switch for troubled hearts. How do we begin to make sense of today's gospel in a world whose heart is constantly troubled? Think about times when your heart has been troubled. Maybe it is now. What does that feel like? We all experience it in our own ways, but see if this sounds familiar. Isolated, paralysed, overwhelmed, powerless, off balance, out of control, disconnected, afraid, thoughts spinning in your head, no stability, despair, grief, tears, anger. Do you recognise any of those? In the midst of a troubled heart, the unspoken question is this, will the centre hold or is everything collapsing around us? Thomas and Philip are feeling the collapse. Much of the world is, perhaps you are too. Will the centre hold? That's our question. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus recognises that our hearts are troubled. He's not warning us about a future condition. He knows the troubling has already begun. He can see it in us because he's experienced it within himself. He knows that our lives and our world are not defined by or limited to what troubles. What if not letting our hearts be troubled begins with looking into our hearts and seeing and naming those troubles? That means facing ourselves, our lives, our world. That may be the first and most difficult thing Jesus asks of us in today's gospel. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't want to see. I don't want to name. It's too difficult and too painful. It takes me too close to the edge of the abyss and a free fall into collapsing life and a collapsing world. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Thomas speaks for us all. We've lost our centre. How do we recentre? Where do we go when it seems everything is collapsing around us? Here's the paradox. Sometimes we have to lose our centre in order to find it. I want to be clear about this. I'm not suggesting that God purposely decenters us. Decentering happens. It's part of life. It's a part of the human condition. Sometimes it comes out of circumstances we didn't create or choose, much like the situation we find ourselves in at this time. At other times, it is a consequence of our own choices or actions. Regardless, Jesus says that it's not a place to stay or a way to live. It is not the life he lives or offers us. If your heart is troubled, then it's time to recenter. Recentering doesn't mean our hearts won't be troubled. It doesn't necessarily fix the problem, whatever it might be. It means that our lives are tethered to something greater than ourselves. It means that our hearts are held secure by the divine life and that we are not free falling into the abyss. Jesus is reminding us that there is a centre and it is not us. It is not the UK and her laws and government. It is not the church and her creeds and doctrines. It is not our success, accomplishments, position or power. We do not have to be the centre, nor do we need to establish it. In fact, we can't. Instead, we awaken to it. We already know the way to and the place of this centre, Jesus says. Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. 
Philip says to Jesus. He bought into the lie that the father is apart from, outside of and distant from himself. The centre, however, is within. The father's house is within. The kingdom is within. Wherever you go, there is a centre. Wherever you face, there is a centre. Whoever you are, there is the centre. Regardless of what troubles, there is the centre. Wherever you are, there is the centre. Not because you are the centre, but because God is within. In the language of today's gospel, the centre is the Father's house, and there are many dwelling places in this house. In the Father's house, there is a dwelling place for every troubled heart. I'm not talking about the afterlife. I'm talking about the dwelling places in the ways God's life intersects with our own. Mercy, forgiveness, justice, generosity, compassion, healing, love, beauty, wisdom, hope, courage, joy, intimacy. These are the dwelling places for troubled hearts, places of recentering. Every time we live into and express the divine attributes in our way of being, with our words or by our actions, we regain our centre, restore balance and take up residence in the Father's house. What in you needs recentering? In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. How might centredness, balance and harmony within yourself help you see and respond to your troubles or the troubles of the world differently? In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. What if, in the midst of troubles, your heart could maintain a normal rhythm and beat with God's life? In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. I hear those words and I imagine a sign blinking like a heartbeat. Rooms available, rooms available, rooms available. Amen. We come now to the creed. I suggest that I say each sentence and you simply repeat it after me because it is quite short. We declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins. In accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers. And to all the apostles. This we have received. And this we believe. Amen. We come now to our prayers. Our Gospel reading was Jesus' famous discourse about him being the true vine, and we the branches. So to the response, you are the vine and we are the branches, please can you respond, make us fruitful in your service. Jesus, our saviour and friend, we come to you with our requests and concerns, many as they are, saying, you are the vine and we are the branches. Make us fruitful in your service. Bless and guide all your people as we work and witness to your saving love in a world confused 
torn apart not only by disease but even more uh, by fears about the financial future. Cut away from us anything that is unfruitful and make us obedient to your commission to worship you in spirit and in truth and to make disciples of all peoples. At the moment we can't do that in any of the ways that we have done for the last 2,000 years. So we pray particularly for all who are playing any part in spreading the good news of Jesus through social media, through videos, YouTube and whatever means is available. We pray not only for those who preach, uh, but also for those who are dealing with the technicalities, those who are preparing music. Help us to find new ways of making disciples and bringing good news, even as people are largely restricted still to their own homes. May we be good news, whether on screen or in person, as we supply help and care for others. And we ask your blessing, Lord, on all who provide care for others, whose fruitfulness is seen in looking after elderly relatives, neighbours who are vulnerable, children who are vulnerable. May we be fruitful too, for you are the vine and we are the branches. Make us fruitful in your service. Bless and guide those in authority over us and over the world. May they act against evil and dishonesty, promote what is good and right, and root their decisions and laws in your compassion and love. We can only pray for all of those who are making decisions around the world, making decisions about how to continue with lockdown, or easing of it, making decisions about how to move forward to uh, make to ensure that everybody remains healthy but that normal life can continue, particularly in terms of employment and finances and work. We pray for our own government as people wait on its announcements every day and every week we commit them to God's care that their words, their decisions may be good and in the interests and well-being of all people, that they will consider those who are at the bottom of the pile as well as those who have more in the way of resources. And we pray too for those who advise them, remembering all, those, all who are involved in medical research, who are dealing with statistics, and informing the decisions which are affecting our daily life to such a huge extent and will do for many, many months to come. You are the vine and we are the branches. Make us fruitful in your service. Bless and guide those who bring comfort as counsellors, carers and aid workers. May their work be governed by compassion, strengthened by faith, as they minister to old and young. And particularly we remember at the moment those who care for the elderly, the very vulnerable and the terminally ill. We remember too those who care for the homeless whose social isolation is of a quite different kind, whose health is often so vulnerable. And we pray too for those who are dropouts, who struggle through for mental health or other reasons with engaging with uh, the rest of society. We pray for all who are providing care, and particularly we remember NHS workers again today, but all those in the emergency services too, 
particularly, but not exclusively, our paramedics. We remember those who provide care in our care homes and those whose care is seen in them continuing to bring deliveries to our stores and shops, in serving us at the checkout when we need to do our shopping, in preparing prescriptions and as in time to come those who will enable us by their work and care to return to some measure of normal living. We pray that we may play our part too, that we may have the care of others always in mind and that in our decisions and our words and our actions we may be those who commend the love of God in Jesus Christ. And may we pray particularly for those we contact through social media, whether it's a straightforward phone call or the many different agencies we can now use. Um, we thank God for Zoom and Teams and House Party and Skype and FaceTime and all of the who use those means. We pray that we may use them to bring your love and hope to those who may be despairing. May we be fruitful in whatever we do in your name in this time of crisis and as we start to recover from it. You are the vine and we are the branches. Make us fruitful in your service. Bless and guide those who suffer uh, through illness or infirmity, lack of purpose or lack of resources, those who struggle with mental health issues and anxiety, those who struggle with being locked down for so long, who may be tempted to break uh, the guidelines and be free. May we not forget those in other countries who are struggling uh, we think of place parts of the United States as well as um, many parts of Europe. And we pray for all of those who have died. Uh, there may be 30,000 plus in this country. Um, I think the total worldwide is well more than 10,000, 10 times that. I think it's in excess of 300,000 now. And those are the ones we know about. May we pray for others whose health is struggling because they are afraid to go to the hospital or get other treatment. Those who are risking their own health and lives. And those who want to treat them. Those whose health is seriously affected because they feel nobody can care about their condition. And... Uh, we remember anyone who is particularly known to us. And we particularly pray for Graham Evans, for Nancy, for Brian, uh, for all of those who are shielding or shut in for what could be a very long period, who we know all those who are struggling to recover from being unwell with this virus. Giving thanks for those who have recovered. We pray too for those whose lack of resources makes them so dependent on others. And in dealing with all of them, may we, by our lives, reassure them of the risen presence of the Lord Jesus. Um, help us to assure them that your love remains in them, and that in their sorrow you are the vine and we are the branches. Make us fruitful in your service. We remember those who have died in the love of Christ, those whose earthly pilgrimage is finished, uh, we particularly pray for Sharon Sang's family. Sharon, uh, as I'm sure many of you will know, passed away last weekend. Uh, we pray for Pam, her mum and her family in this country. Her husband Con and her little boy Rupert, who I think is seven, 
and the family in the States. I hope that we will be able to give you some specific information before long about Sharon's funeral. Um, but until then, please hold everyone in her family very much in your prayers and love as you commit her, um, a faithful and very committed Christian, to God's loving care. And we also pray for the families of all those whose funerals are taking place under our auspices at the moment. Um, this week we've uh, uh, said goodbye to Doreen Hill, Keith Lake and Reese Edwards. Next week to Douglas Phillips. Um, and uh, we ask God's blessing on all of those. I ask that his comfort and peace will be with them. And I ask you too to bless and guide us in our earthly pilgrimage as we continue the journey. May we remain in you the true vine, so that your life may be seen in us. You are the vine and we are the branches. Make us fruitful in your service. And we ask all these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, there are a lot of people joining us at different points um, and although you may not see them, many of your friends, those you worship with, and you are worshipping with them now, by the way, don't forget that. Um, they want to share the peace as we always have done so enthusiastically. And so we remember that the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And if you have anyone else in your household to share the peace with, please do that now. And if you haven't anyone in your own household, please remember in your prayers and in your thoughts to share the peace with all of your friends in this Christian community and far and wide. The peace of the risen Christ is far greater than any temporary trials of this world. If you would like, uh, or you have done before, to uh, fetch a little bit of wine and a piece of bread, if that helps you to share in the sacrament of our Lord Jesus, um, please do that. Please feel free to do that. But I have the bread and the wine here, so... We will use the usual responses. You know the response, I'm sure. With this bread that we bring, we will remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we will remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood. Gifts from God to his table we bring. We will remember Jesus. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. 
But chiefly are we bound to praise you because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true paschal lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again he has restored to us everlasting life. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for the sins of all. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Peter, Francis and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And we gather in, in to one all of our prayers, all of our thoughts, all of our care for the world, for those who are still terribly ill with this virus in hospital, for all of those who have lost loved ones who are grieving. As we say with confidence, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. In 
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The blood of Christ. Amen. And so we pray together. God of truth, we have seen with our eyes. and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith, that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What a wonderful closing set of responses. Your response is, we must love each other. Day by day, as we have been loved, we must love each other. Wherever we travel, as we have been loved, we must love one another. All the way home, as we have been loved, we must love each other. Our old life is ended. God is making us new. We must love each other. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us with everyone we love and pray for, with our community, with those who are struggling in any way as a result of the present crisis and not only in the immediate days and weeks to come but for evermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Um, there may be some changes a little bit to the format, which will improve it. We're getting used to this now as a way of working. I think we're going to need to for quite a while yet. Uh, but thank you for joining. Thank you for being with us. And... We look forward uh, to next time, but even more to the time when we may finally join together in worship and praise, in fellowship and love one with another. So hope you enjoy your after church refreshments now, whatever they are. Perhaps you've got some uh, some toast, toasting uh, liquid uh, from yesterday to finish off, whatever you would like. God bless you all and I shall see you all very soon. Uh, morning all, happy Easter five. So this morning we have got Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, Jesus, Lover of My Soul, Gather Around, and then the communion hymns, Love is His Word, 
and in bread we bring you and then the final hymn here in this place Thank you. 